Welcome, everyone, to Music Junkies, a podcast about people sharing extraordinary stories about how music has impacted their lives. Welcome, everyone, to Music Junkies. I'm your host, Annette Smith, and our guest today is the great Dan Morrow. So pretty cool thing. I'm in Canada. He's in the U.S which is super exciting. I was telling Tyler, we were listening to your playlist before I jumped on this call with you and Tyler was like, what the hell's wrong with him? Why can't he just be here and do it live? I'm like, I know how ridiculous. I'm a pretty big deal, Dan. This is like yeah. the 39th episode. You should be flying here and doing this live, right? <laughs> Our technology, I'm helping you expand different countries here, reach That's more audience. Right. That's right. That's right. Yeah. So before we get started, I always like to ask my guests, how is your experience putting your playlist together? And if you were to describe your playlist to somebody, how would you describe it? Yeah, a couple of really good questions. I mean, I'll start with saying that music for me as a kid was something that I like really wasn't interested in. I didn't really know music. I didn't listen to it. All my friends had those, those Walkmans and I didn't have one. I didn't really get into it until high school. For me as a young kid, it was just kind of sports, sports, sports. Um, but of course, what comes with sports is, you know, in the locker room before hockey games, you're listening to, to music. And that's kind of where it all started. Um, I thought it was cool, but I never really loved it. And, um, you know, my wife will still make fun of me today because I don't know the words to songs. I really don't. For me, it's more of the tune and the melody and just kind of, you know, the feeling that it, that it gives me at the end of the day. And then I kind of make up my words as I go and, and uh, she doesn't like it, but that's maybe why I keep doing it. So, um, yeah, it's been a, obviously it's, it's evolved as I've, as I've gotten older and had much more of appreciation to it. Um, you know, I, when I was in junior high, I tried to get into music. I tried playing the trumpet and I have no rhythm. I've never been a good dancer. I couldn't, I couldn't do it very well. So, uh, maybe that's why I shied away from it. Yeah. <laughs> So how would you describe your playlist to somebody if uh, they wanted to listen to it? What would you say it was? I would say it's, it's kind of a mix of everything. You know, it has your, your maybe, I don't know, sadder songs, but slower songs. It's got your kind of pump you up. It's got different genres. Um, I think it's just, it kind of follows my transition in music of, you know, what I liked at certain times and at what kind of specific times I li listened to a certain song. Um, but I would say it's, it's unique because it's all over the place. It's not all in one genre. It's, it's a mix of everything and different bands from, you know, different ages of, of the music journey and, and that sort of thing. Yeah. So yeah. I have did, like I said, 39 episodes and you're the first to have a few songs that are like my favorite songs on there, there you go. which I was actually like shocked. So I'll, <laughs> I'll share them when we get there, but I was like, yeah, yeah Dan, awesome. <laughs> So we're going to start with your first song. Are you ready? Yeah, ready. All right. I think everybody just knows the beginning, right? They just know it's coming. Some Tragically Hip. The Hip, yeah. Right. Some New Orleans is sinking. So what about that song? Do you love or do you have a special memory that resonates you with that song? Yeah. So being a, an athlete playing baseball, before you walk up to bat at your home field, you get a walk-up song kind of like a song to excite you pump you up that sort oh, of thing cool. um it's awesome and um my I'd say my third year of university I was going into it and I just didn't really know what I wanted to do as a walk-up song I'd done a few others which are on this list as well we'll get to um and I was just you know talking with my family and my mom around you know what would be a really good song and you know my parents love the tragically hip and she's like just kind of threw some songs out there and I didn't really know much about them but um, being a Canadian band, being a Canadian at school in the U.S., I thought it was kind of a great tie there. And I just, I heard New Orleans is sinking and I fell in love with it. Um, I just love the start. I love kind of the beat and the melody. And it just, I don't know, it just made, I just gave me confidence walking up to the plate, which was really cool. Um, but my favorite story with this song is I was playing in a summer league in Saskatchewan. And this is my walk-up song. And I was coming up to plate and the umpire stops me before I get up there. And he says, hey, let's just sit here and like, you know, just kind of hold still, just so we can listen to this song a little bit longer. And I was like, that's, <laughs> that's awesome. That's awesome. Right. So that's one of my greatest stories. But when I was at school in the U S nobody knew what song it was. And I think that's kind of why I liked it as well. It was just different. It was unique. 
you know, a lot of people had these, these new rap songs or, yeah. you know, pop or whatever. I was like, this is just a classic that nobody knows. And, um, you know, sharing a little bit of the Canadian pride. I love it. So did yeah. you ever hear a walk up song that you were like, really, dude, that's, that's the song you're going up to. Uh, I've heard a few of them. One of them would be that baby shark song. <laughs> baby shark. <laughs> really? Yeah. It's, oh my uh, goodness. Yeah. So there are some, but Hey, but teach their own, right? That's the beautiful That's thing right. about it. It's, it's everybody's own song that they get so to did choose. Every single position have their own song or was it only certain positions? So every single, anyone who played or went up to bat and only if it's the home team. So if you're the away team, you're visiting, you don't get any walk-up songs. You just walk up to silence. Right. So you're like in your own head singing your walk up song. Yeah. Um, but then each position player on the team had their own walk up song. And then pitchers have one too. So when they, you know, come into the game from the bullpen or start the game and walk up to the mound, they get their song as well. So I don't know why baseball did that. It's just a thing that they've done. And um, yeah. I love it. I don't think I've ever heard that when I've watched a baseball game. So that's really, really cool. Maybe now you'll notice it. If you now go to a I game, will notice it. you'll notice like, why is this song different? Yeah. So they each get their own walk-up song, which is really cool. I love it. Yeah. So what is kind of the craziest thing that you've seen growing up playing baseball in the dugout? Jeez. <laughs> well, I mean, we've had quite a few we've had a few bench clearing brawls so that was crazy kind of just seeing guys run from the dugout um i think the best part about baseball too is like rain delays you know i would say rain delays i had a buddy this is in calgary that big stadium the foothill stadium um and um rain delays so they throw the tarps on and he shirt off pants off socks off he's literally in his sliding shorts he's got his, his jock strap on puts a helmet on grabs a bat, run up to the plate, pretends to swing, and then he takes off, runs around first, and then slides headfirst into second. And, <laughs> you know, just just everybody on the bench is just dying laughing, and the other team's dying laughing. Um, so it's it's that. And then just, you know, playing pranks on people, right? You got gum, you blow a bubble, take the gum out, stick it on their hat so they don't know. They just got this big bubble on their, you know, on the top of their hat. And I don't know, just – there's a lot of shenanigans that went on. It's, it's cool because it's a sport that you don't really have to pay attention when you're on the bench, right? Like it's, it's a slower sport. So if you're not up to bat or you're not in the field, you can just hang out there and, and just kind of shoot the shit with guys. Right. And yeah. mess around. And it's, it's not like hockey where it's you're off the bench and then prepared because you're right back on, yeah. you know? So it's, that's why I liked it as well. A little bit more laid back. I love it. I love yeah. it. You ready for your next song? Let's do it. All right, some U2, Sunday, you too, yeah. Bloody Sunday. A great song, great, great band, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. So many people, lots of, lots of the podcasts that I've did um, before, lots of U2, lots of U2. Mm -hmm. Lots of people don't like them because when they put those, their album on everybody's phone without them knowing. Do you remember, do you hear that? Yeah, I remember that. Or whatever. But I, remember I, grew up, that. I grew up, every car ride I went with my, my dad, U2 was playing. Every car ride went, I was going to work with him. He was taking me to hockey, wherever it was you two. And then uh, sometimes we listen to Bob Marley as well. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Didn't throw that on there, but you two is one. And, you know, when we were, I think, I don't know how old I was, probably, you know, grade six, maybe for hockey. They're like, everybody needs to come up with a song to have on like our team playlist in the locker room. And uh, again, I didn't know music at the time, but I was like, I listen to you two. This song kind of gets me excited let's do that. All the dads in the locker room, like, this is a great song. They were excited. So the, the, my teammates were like, what, what is this? <laughs> what is this song? What, what was it like growing up in your home den? Like, how was your mom? How was your dad? What type of people were they? Yeah, they were, you know, super down to earth people. Um, you know, they weren't too extravagant. I just, I think we were a very, you know, kind of simple family that cared a lot about each other and, you know, cared a lot about other people as well. And, um, you know, I think it's a really good question, you know, it makes you reflect on a lot of things and, and how I grew up. And I think they, they raised us very, very well with kind of, Hey, we'll give you some freedom, but at the same time, here's things you do and here's what you don't do. And here's how you treat people. And here's how you respect people. And I think that obviously turned me into the, the person I am today. And for me, I'm the oldest of four. So the chance to grow up and kind of really take on that, I don't know if you'd say leadership role, but like the 
the mentor kind of guidance right from day one, you know, with my siblings um, was something that's really shaped me to kind of who I am. Um, but we're a family that loves sports. You know, we love being around sports, playing sports. Um, every summer we go to, out to Merrill Lake and in, in the Sick Moose area for two weeks. And we just love that. We pack up the truck and um, everybody, we, you know, have everything and be stuffed full and we drive out there and, you know, those are always two great weeks. And um, yeah, we did a lot together. It was I love really it. Good. So what kind of but, characteristics do you appreciate about your dad and what kind of characteristics do you appreciate about with your mom? Yeah. So my dad is kind of a no BS, you know, he's kind of the guy, Hey, you want to go hang out with friends? You make sure all your stuff's done before you go, you cut the grass, you all that kind of stuff. I mean, he put us to work in the yard. He's a, he's a home builder by trade. So um, anything around the house, we were doing it. He wasn't hiring. He wasn't bringing somebody in. We were doing it. So I think maybe that's why I don't like doing that stuff today because I had to do it growing up, but I definitely have appreciation for it. Um, just a hard, hard working man. You know, he, you know, just kind of made everything for himself and, and has done very well and, and super grateful for all that he's done. And then my mom was, you know, she was just the, you know, cared about everybody. I remember, you know, when we were playing sports and someone's mom was, or parent was late to pick them up. I mean, we wouldn't leave until they showed up, you know, other parents would have left. And my mom was like, no, we're leaving until I know that this person's, you know, getting home safe and with their family. And, um, or if they're like, Hey, yeah, my dad's not coming for an hour. Well, Hey, come home with us. We'll feed you dinner. We'll do all that kind of stuff. So, you know, people, people loved her because that's just who she was. She cared about other people more than herself. And, um, yeah, so I think I, I got you know, best of both. They had, a, they had a really good contrast of um, kind of my dad was a little bit tougher. I, was, I definitely, I'm mama's boy. I would go to her first <laughs> and I, before I would him. Um, so you're saying you like your mom better than your dad? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> See, they're, they're equal. They're equal. Yeah. They're equal. I love that. I love that. All right. We got some Justin Timberlake. <laughs> I feel like if you were a dancer, Dan. Yeah, this would be the song. Some JT for sure. This was my grade seven, grade eight. This is my alarm. I don't know why. I don't know how, but this is my alarm that I woke up to. Um, and it's just, I don't know, like that time was just such a, I feel like such a vivid time. You know, when you kind of change, you go from elementary to junior high. Junior high is such a big time in your life where you're, you're meeting new people and you know, relationships start happening. And so I just remember kind of those years very vividly. And this is a song that kind of always brings me back to, you know, the house we lived in and the community we lived in and, you know, the, the friends I had in that neighborhood and us playing street hockey and running around. And it's kind of like this song just brings all that back. You ever do is, anything bad in high school? In high school? Nothing crazy. No. Um, just, you know, you typically, you, you drink in high school, you know, cops show up, you run away, all that kind of stuff. <laughs> um, nothing too crazy. No, I was, um, I was probably the one that was telling my friends, we probably shouldn't do this. It's probably not a good idea. That was kind of me. I was a reasonable one. Maybe that makes me the boring friend, but um, <laughs> I look at it as being responsible, as my parents would say, but no, nothing, nothing, nothing crazy, nothing too be- crazy. If you could be any animal in the entire world, what animal would you be and why? Hmm. You know, I would say, I think, you know, maybe a shark. I don't know why, but I'm terrified of sharks. But I also want to go cage diving with sharks. Yeah. Because I think they're such a unique animal. Um, And I I think what's cool about them is they can't stop swimming. They have to always keep moving forward or else they – they die, right? The, they yep. need that flow of oxygen, but they're also a, you know, predator. There's not much that can kind of take them out. But at the end of the day, they're, I don't know, they just have this presence of them. They're just kind of, you know, scary, but also. Yeah. People want to be them. I'm scared people of them, are, but I want to yeah. be them. Yeah. And people respect them. Yeah. Right. I think that's a big thing too, is they respect them. And, and there's just a mix of size and speed and strength. Like, I don't know. I would say that for sure. Hey, I'm glad you didn't say like a wombat or a koala bear or something crazy <laughs> yeah. like that. Not yeah. that that's bad, but yeah, I think you're a little bit tougher than that for yeah, sure. I appreciate that. <laughs> All right, next song. Yeah. All right. This is like, I'm impressed. Yeah. I love Dropkick Murphys. Coming up to Boston. 
Yeah. Have you ever seen them in concert before? I haven't, no. So good. If you ever get a chance, yeah. I've seen them like seven times. They're so good. Really? Yeah. Unfortunately, I think this is the only song I know of theirs. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, because again, it, it was my walk-up song. Okay. So my last year of high school, um, playing at a small baseball academy down in, in Box Hall, Alberta. Um, this was the walk-up song that I had. Again, I don't know why, but it's one that I did. And now every time my aunt hears that song, she sends me a text or like a video message of the song playing. She's like, this is your walk. I was like, <laughs> every time. Doesn't matter if she's at the bar, if she's at yep. listening to the radio, she sends it to me. So I think that's kind of cool. Just, you know, having her remember, you know, remember kind of that song with me and, and baseball. And, and that's I cool. love that. Yeah. So obviously, how far did you make it in baseball? So I got to play college baseball, um, played four years of division three in Minnesota, which is where now I reside and um, tried to play some professional after that, went to some showcases. Um, fortunately, nothing really came from it. But at the end of the day, it was a really good experience, and I was glad to to give it a shot. But I was then, after baseball came to an end, excited for the next challenge and the next journey. I mean, that's what yeah. I loved about sports is something different every day. Right? So when you talk about showcasing, what does that actually mean? Like you go out somewhere, you you know, you perform, and then somebody will say, no, sorry, you need more time, or you need to develop, yeah. more, or we're not interested. Yeah, great question. So essentially, um, after I graduated, I played summer baseball. And then I took kind of the next eight months. And all I did was baseball, I'd wake up, I'd train, I'd work out, I'd practice, then I'd coach, like my whole day revolved around it. And uh, it was all in preparation for a showcase that I did in Palm Springs, Florida. So essentially, what happens is you, you pay money. So again, it's you're betting on yourself to go perform and succeed. So you pay, and they so you pay the, the program essentially and they'll cover your food and your housing and, and all that kind of stuff. And I was in Palm Springs for a month, which was awesome. And it was in wow. February and, you know, lived with a bunch of guys from all across the country and even different, different countries. And we played baseball. They probably had eight or 10 different teams. You were assigned to a team. You could get traded to a team. It's kind of like a mini league in a month, but everywhere you went, there were scouts. Scouts are all over the place, just watching, observing, and that sort of thing, right? So um, I did that, and then I went to Florida for two weeks, which is kind of same thing. So you how know? do you find out? You go to your locker, and there's like an envelope or a big X on your locker? <laughs> yeah. So essentially, you know, guys are getting signed throughout. So somebody might see you one time and be like, all right, I want that guy on my team. And that coach will come up and talk to you and, and that sort of thing. So it's essentially, it's not like – a tryout where it's at the end you make it or you don't make it yeah it's, it's kind of just all throughout exactly so i was talking to a couple a uh, couple teams and a couple coaches that were, were interested and curious problem i ran into is the visa situation right so even a, a play a professional sport in the u.s you need a specific visa and a lot of these teams that i was trying out for didn't have a lot of money so they're like well we could spend it five grand for dan to get a visa who has no experience or we could just get an American who has no experience and save five grand. Yeah. Right. So from a business standpoint, I kind of understood where teams were coming from. Um, but it was definitely unfortunate, um, that whole process, but yeah. really it's, it's just to kind of help you get your name out there and, yeah. and showcase. But so how did you feel at the end of the day when, you know, Frank and Tom and Jeff are all getting signed and you go back to the house? How is that? Yeah, that's a, a great question. I mean, obviously you, you feel a little bit deflated because, you know, again, that you want that to be you. I mean, I think it's, and we live in a society today where you see other people succeed, you, you know, you want it. Like that's just how, how it is. Right. Yeah. Um, but I, I knew that, Hey, if, if it was meant to be, it was meant to be, you know, yeah. if I was meant to find a spot, then I would, I would sign with the team. And if I, I didn't, then that's all right as well. You know? Um, so obviously it's, it's tough to see, kind of other people getting the results that, that you want at the end of the day. Yeah. Well, you got to understand it's part of the process, right? right? And if it's right, your time will come. But what I found is I treated these showcases more like a job and I, it was, Hey, I'm going here to, to, to have a job or have a career. And it wasn't like, Hey, I'm just going to go have fun and play baseball. Right. And I think that's when I realized that, you know, maybe I don't want it as much as I do because I'm just thinking about it like a job and not thinking like, you know, I'm just playing a game. Yeah, um, that's kind of made it easy for me to to make that transition out of the out of the game because I realized that that's what I was thinking about it, 
and it wasn't, you know, it wasn't yeah. as much fun as I thought it might be. It's a good right. way to, you know, obviously we always feel defeated if we don't make the team or we don't do this and we don't do that. Um, and it's pretty cool, like years later that you get to reflect and kind of mm -hmm. go back and be like, oh, well, I didn't make this because I ended up doing this, which is incredible. So it's a great way to look at it. But just like anything, it sucks, but then you get through it. <laughs> yeah, for sure. hundred <laughs> percent. That's right. Okay, next song. I love it. I'm impressed, Dan. Yeah. The first one to have ACDC after 39 episodes. No way. No ACDC. Crazy to me. Crazy. Yeah. All right. So why do you love? Oh, those man. Songs? I just love the intro. I think what you might notice about me is a lot of these songs like New Orleans is sinking, Dropkick, you know, Murphy's, the uh, shipping yeah. out to Boston. This one, it's just, it's the intro. For me, it's just kind of, it's, it's the building up. It's the excitement. Um, that sort of thing. I think it was my third year of university. This is just a song that I really got into. And, you know, I don't know what it was, but I just loved playing it before I started doing my studying. I turned this on and just kind of like, kind of makes me feel like something big is going to happen. Yeah. Whether it be, I, I need to go get my homework done or we play it before we go out, you know, partying and go to the bar. This was kind of get it going uh, we had a dartboard in our in our in our room so it was hey before the game we throw on hell's bells and just kind of build up the excitement and the energy before the game um yeah it's just one of those songs that right. did i that. know you weren't into a lot like obviously knew a lot of music or really kind yep. of absorbed that did you go into any concerts that just kind of blew you away though you're like oh wow this this was amazing yeah um let's see I went to a Drake concert. Me and my roommate, we love Drake. I know there's no songs on this list here of Drake, but that was that was a fun experience to go to, you know, that concert. I've been to a Kenny Chesney concert, which was really cool um, at a baseball field in yeah. Minnesota here. So that was awesome. There was one though called the Static Shift. They're a local band from Calgary, and I think they're like early 20s, and they just played at uh, Bottle Screw Bills. Have yeah. you been to that? And they were unreal, unreal, just sitting there. They were on the, what was the show? It was like The Voice for Canada or The Next Big Singer or something like that. They were on a, one of those TV shows in, in Canada. But um, we went to a couple of their concerts. We found them, me and my buddies, and we, we loved their music. And we just kind of followed them to a couple different bars and stuff. And okay. I think I like those types of concerts yeah. because it's, it's kind of more intimate. More intimate. Yeah. yeah. When you're at the big ones, it's they're fun. Don't get me wrong. But it's you know, singing to everybody. We're there, like, literally, you're so close. You're like, yeah. And it's, and these are people, you know, when you go to a big concert, like Kenny or Drake, we went to Paul McCartney, like, they've already made it, right? They're, they're okay. They're doing good. But to see somebody that's like, you know, chasing their dream and, and still just playing because they love it, they're not there for the money. Otherwise, you know, they just keep playing because they want to at the end of the day. Yeah. And I yeah. think that's, it's cool to see that. So did you have a Never. pair of uh, leather pants growing up? No, I didn't. <laughs> no, no leather pants. Still don't. No leather jacket. No leather, leather jacket. Did you have a no. favorite 80s band growing up? I don't even. Who would be some bands in the like, this is it. Like, again, I don't know. <laughs> whole lot. I'll give you some examples of who would be in the 80s. Like Motley Crue, mm. Kid Row. Yeah. I, I mean, I know Motley Crue is Led, Led Zeppelin, right? Yeah, well, 70s, but yeah. 70s, yeah. yeah. So again, I I don't know what specific yeah. time frame they're in, but I've heard of them and I wouldn't say I have a favorite though. Did you ever have a, like a, a singer that you wanted to be? A singer that I wanted to be. Not a singer, but I did want to be Zac Efron. Okay. I thought he was, <laughs> yeah, again, he's got those high school musicals. So I guess if you want to call that singing. Yeah, um, for sure. At the end of the day, an actor, but no, there was no singer that I really aspired you could, to. You could pull off some Zac Efron <laughs> for sure. <laughs> I always bug my sister that, and she's like, "There's no way, there's no my, way." My my daughter, because Zac is like probably twenty years younger than me, but yeah, when Zac Efron like first came out, I can't remember. We went to the theater to see it. I think it was like seventeen again or something. Yeah, yeah. But I just like wanted to like harass her, but I was like, this this boy is cute <laughs> so obviously he's a 
evolved and grown up and he's of yeah. age so it's not creepy that i'm creeping on him anymore so every time we we go see all the zach efron movies because i'm all like zach efron i love zach efron she's like oh my god mom seriously like it's okay <laughs> now because he's like you know 30 yeah. you gotta be 30 yeah. now so we're safe we're safe yeah yeah he's not a teenager yeah right okay great song i feel like you could come out to this song too yeah Lots of people have high hopes on the, their playlists. I love this. Yeah, I think it's more of that kind of newer song. Mm -hmm. And for me, it was just the lyrics. You know, I just, I thought the lyrics were awesome and just kind of uplifting and encouraging and, and probably one of the few songs that I recognize some of the lyrics to. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's just a right. song that a couple of years ago that kind of excited me and figured it'd be a good uh, still playing today it might be a good walk-up song for baseball it would be it'd be a great walk-up song so yeah. you go visit your girlfriend in the u.s and you get forced to get married so let's yeah. talk about that a little bit <laughs> forced to get married we got encouraged to get married from a legal perspective um but we wanted to of course so um but yeah it was a big change you know i came to minnesota with two weeks worth of clothes um all winter clothes of course and uh you know, eight months later, eight, nine months, crazy how fast time goes. Still down here, right? And it's been, it's been an awesome experience and, you know, really get to spend a lot of time with her family and get to know them. And, um, you know, it's difficult to own a car or anything. So just getting around and hasn't been as easy or, you know. Yeah, not so a how long is, have you and your wife been together? So we started dating our senior year of university, which was 2016. So that would have been... It was a spring semester. So what is that? Five, over five years now? Yeah. Right, 2021. Yeah. So five and a half years. So how did um, you guys meet? We met, so we went to the same university. Um, we, let's see here. So we really became friends our third year of university. But the first three years, she had a boyfriend from like high school. So they'd been together for a long, long time. Um, and I was really good friends with one of her roommates um, who we had class together. So we had every class together. We literally did all our homework together, like just a really, really good friend of mine. Yeah. And, um, you know, we'd always hang out on the weekends, you know, have drinks together and go to the bar. Like her friends were close with my friends. So we kind of had a good, you know, group there. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, we were friends. And then kind of last semester before we graduated, just things kind of, you know, took a, a different turn and, and we became more than friends, I guess. And so were you stalking dating. her a little bit? Um, I don't know about that, but I, I will say that freshman year I saw her and I was like, Oh, I think she's, you know, kind of cute. She's athletic. She's smart. You know, those yeah. are things that, that I was looking for. And, um, this took four years to go and get there, but good things take time. Right. Um, right. it doesn't always happen right away. So, um, let's talk about the proposal. How did yeah. you propose? We were at uh, Mission Hill Winery in Kelowna. So a uh, close family friend of ours, they have a place in Kelowna right on the lake. And we went to visit them. Well, actually, we went to Naramata because Jeremy and Brendan, who we work with, they threw a contest in Naramata to take some people out to see Cameron and that sort of thing. So we had spent three days in Naramata, which was fantastic, beautiful out there. And then we were spending the next two or three days with them in Kelowna. So um, on the day of proposal, we, I woke up, we had to drive from Naramata to Kelowna. So obviously I knew it was probably the quietest car ride I've ever had because I just don't want to, didn't want to say anything. Didn't want to, you know, spill the beans or anything. And then we get to their place and, you know, kind of get showered up and get ready. And then we go to Mission Hill Winery. Um, and you no, know, my sister was there, which was really cool. So my sister, and then, um, a lady named Deborah, who's our close family friend, she, they kind of planned everything. Um, all right, Dan, here's what's going to happen. We're going to show up and this is where you're going to do it. So um, propose kind of in the vineyards. We have vineyards beside us. You are looking out over kind of the lake. Um, and yeah, it was perfect. And then after that, we, we got to do a helicopter ride. So oh, a, a tour fun. over the Okanagan in Kelowna, which was fun. And then we went spend a few more days at a few more wineries, came home, had some drinks. And it was a uh, it was an awesome day. It was beautiful. There was yeah, that is beautiful. Yeah. So, beautiful. what was your guys's game plan, though? Okay, proposal, and then like long engagement, because obviously she was living in the U.S. 
you were living yeah. in Canada. I know that you had plans to go move to the U.S. Mm -hmm. That just kind of sped it up a little bit. Or yeah, it's COVID, funny. I guess COVID yeah. sped it up <laughs> a little sped bit. It up. So <laughs> it's funny you, you, you say that because when I you know asked her, her dad and, and then her mom was there if I could marry her, um, her mom's like, yeah, but what's the plan? And I was like, I don't know, but I know getting married will help speed up the process. So <laughs> that's kind of step number one. Um, so we got engaged. We had a lawyer um, that we were working with and the lawyer proposed something called a, a fiance visa or a K-1 visa. So a K-1 visa is, I'm not sure if you've heard of the show 90 Day Fiance no. on TLC. So essentially it's TLC. It's a, set, it's a, it's a show that what this visa does is once you're approved, you have 90 days to enter the country. And then once you're in the country, you have 90 days to get married. And then from there, you apply for a green card and permanent residency and that sort of thing. So we had done that and we had gone through the first couple stages, but the next stage was in Montreal. I had to go to an interview. And when COVID hit, you know, Quebec was like the worst of all the provinces, right? And they literally shut down everything. Um, and one of the things they shut down was their, their U.S. consulate. So I was supposed to go to an interview and they were, they've been shut down. I think they might still be shut down. Like they're so behind on processing everything. Wow. They, it was supposed to take about a year, start to finish. We'd be on, I think two full years coming up in November. And it's anticipated to probably take another year after that. Wow. So we would have just been engaged doing a long distance for a long, long time. Um, so this other option of just, Hey, let's get married. You know, when you come down, let's just get married. We didn't even think about it. It was just kind of spur of the moment. And, um, then we kind of canceled that other visa and put a new application in place Yeah, and it's still taking a while. So everything's <laughs> slowing on backlog, but at least we're together now. So yes, because that would have right. been a, a big challenge, obviously with COVID that would have really for that, you know, it's coming back yeah. again let alone, but that whole year and a bit, 18 months where people were not traveling and, mm -hmm. you know, it's crazy. So, yeah, it's wild. So very lucky. And you get to be on the other side. It's like the mail order husband instead of <laughs> mail order bride. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The opposite. That's right. All right. Next yeah. song. This is young and beautiful. Yeah. Lana Del Rey. Yeah. I love it. I love it. This one was, so in baseball, we have something called a throwing partner. So what a throwing partner is, is every time you go to practice or a game, you play catch with the same person. And my person, his name was Harley. And Harley was a six foot five, you know, massive, just jacked individual, you know. And Lana Del Rey was his favorite artist. And it just amazed me because he's, you know, big guy. So you think like, and it's just this, kind of softer slower lovey-dovey music and i don't know i'll always remember that you know because every time every single game you know in the in the locker room or when we're in the library together he's like playing it all the time and uh i, I was music that i studied to for a while and just kind of remember him i guess through that process he's a, a super great guy and um he helped me a lot just kind of you know he's a couple years older than me at university so when i first got there he kind of took me under his wing, um, you know, not only in the gym, which was a good thing to kind of help push me a little bit, put on some weight because I was scrawny and skinny. Um, but then just kind of helped me, you know, walk through the ropes. And that mentorship was, was really helpful in my kind of, you know, development performance, just to know that, you know, not only the coach was there for me, but, but somebody like that as well. Was, I love was, that. That's great. It's always good to have somebody that kind of takes you under your wing when you're, when you're going through something. And then the fact that he, you know, yeah Not, you know this massive dude like all this <laughs> kind of soft music is, is yeah like, what is something that maybe people don't know about you dan huh that's a really good question do you like to knit are you a crocheter not a knitter <laughs> um i don't know that's you know really i feel like i'm a super simple person i don't need a whole lot um, I always like to be doing stuff. Like I always like to be, you know, moving around, playing a sport, doing something, being active. Yeah. Um, someone, people don't know about me. 
Do you have any pet peeves? Um, one was when I was a kid, my, my, when we were growing up, my sister would breathe really loud when she was eating and it just, <laughs> you know, pissed me off at the dinner table, but I got over that one. Um, Do you have a new one now that you're an adult? Now that I'm an adult, pet peeves. Not really. I think it's just maybe the basic people say they're going to do something and don't. Um, yeah. And I think, you know, even for me, that's kind of me, you know, helps me hold my word and, you know, do what I say I'm going to do and um, a big thing there. But other than that, um, I, I love, I love sports cars. That's something I find them interesting. I don't know a whole lot about them, but I think they're really cool. Classic Is there a cars. car that stands out for you that you're like, yeah, one day I'd like. Yeah. 1996. Ferrari F355. Um, it's kind of a more retro sports car, but not like, a, you know, 60s, 70s sports car. It's more like a, when they first really started coming out with these more, you know, exotic sports cars. Yeah. And what color. Uh, I would go black with black rims and then a tan interior. Yeah. And I just love the sound. So every, every morning I watch a video of it. It's just, you hear it take off and the sound and um, yeah. It's just exciting. I don't know. I saw one in Calgary. And from that day, I'm like, this is, I think that's what I want. Yeah. Nice it's, car. It's not flashy. It's not like too flashy. It's just a simple um, kind of sports car at the end of the day. And it's different. I haven't seen a lot of them. So I think. No, I haven't cool. seen a lot of them either. Yeah. All so. right. Some Nickelback. Nickelback. Yeah. This is a good wakeboarding song. Yeah. Animals. Um, I just. I got a lot of respect for Nickelback. I think that's a big thing why I like them because I know a lot of people don't like them. I don't know why, but I, I just, I think they do their thing. They don't care what other people think. They make their music and for them, who cares? They're successful. Right. And because of it, but this is a song that I guess my favorite memory with this song would be when my, my wife and I got married, married, like had our, not just a legal ceremony, but our actual ceremony. Uh, my family came down and, after the, the church part, we were on a party bus to go to our, um, like the reception and the dinner yeah. and that sort of thing. And this song came on and it was me, my two sisters, and then my brother. And we all got up and just started, you know, head bobbing and singing this song. And, it, and people were like, what the heck is going on with these people? <laughs> but it was awesome. It was such a, a cool moment to share that with them on a, a really special day. And I'll remember that forever. Um, and that's kind of why I put it on this list because like I said, it's, I like the music and it's something that my, me and my siblings really like, we all like it, which I think is probably rare for siblings. So like, yeah, for sure it is. Music. Um, but just that memory will always stick with me of, of that. Great memory. Yeah. Do you have any really big fears, Dan? Are you afraid of anything? Um, besides what I said earlier of sharks, uh, <laughs> that's kind of the big fear. But that's an easy one to avoid. Just don't go in the water. And you have yeah. no problems. Um, my big fear. You know, I think a big fear would just be, you know, not living up to the type of person I want to be or some things I want to accomplish um, because I, I guess I give up or I don't put in all the work or whatever it might be. Like for baseball, like I was happy to move on because I knew I gave it everything. I knew I gave it everything I had and um, didn't hold anything back. I think that would be a fear of, of, yeah, holding something back. That's a great, that's a great yeah. way to look at it for sure. So yeah. here's a song that I can't believe that you had on your playlist. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Right. It's so crazy. I love freaks. Timmy mm. trumpet. That's amazing song. I love yeah. it. I, I was just, shocked. I just love kind of all electronic EDM music, dance music. Like when I'm working, that's what I have playing. It just kind of keeps me upbeat and excited. Um, I think big, one of my dreams is to have a party on a yacht and just have like that kind of music just going and people. Yeah, that'd be fine. Yeah, I don't know. It's just, I think maybe that's a different side of me that people wouldn't expect that I would be into, you know, that kind of music. Yeah. Um, but I've, I've been to a few kind of, I don't know, concerts or if you want to call it a rave or whatever, yeah. but um, I just love the music. I think it's, it's exciting and um, energetic and puts you in a good mood. I don't know what they say. I don't know what the words are, but again, <laughs> for me, it's all about the beats and just kind of the, the feeling that it gives you. 
Yeah, I love it. We're on to your last song. Can you believe that? No, it's quick. So quick. Okay, you ready? Yeah. How to how to save a life. Yeah. The fray. The fray, I think another one's script or the script, but this was my study music, like literally four years in university. I needed to study. I'd throw this, I'd be hell's bells to kind of get me excited. And then it would be the fray to kind of calm me down and get me. Walk you into the study time. (laughs) Yeah. Get me in in the mood. But that's right. um, Again, I don't, sometimes I like maybe the, is it a slower or sadder music? It just kind of, I don't know. I think it makes you think, you know, it really does just kind of allows you to take a step back and just think you know, have your mind work and think about things that you maybe haven't thought about before or how you're you know, feeling or whatever it might be. And I think not in a bad way, but just to kind of recognize where you're at. And, um, yeah. I agree. Yeah. There is another YouTube song yeah. out here. So maybe we should play that because maybe. With or without you. Yeah. 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 About a, a song to make you reflect for sure. Yeah. No kidding. Yeah, it was one of my mom's favorite songs. You know, she she loved that song. Um, and then it's crazy because when she passed away, when we were coming home from the hospital, that was on the radio. No and way. It was it was crazy. You know, I'll just always remember that moment. I was driving home with my siblings and um, that was on and we were just like, this is amazing. It's crazy. So um, it's a song that, yeah, it doesn't matter where you are who's with you, who's not with you, they're, they'll always be there with you, right? And that's what, you know, for me, my mom is each and every day that she's there with us. So um, I like that you saved that one for last. I don't know if you meant to do that, but you did. I did. And, and I don't uh, know too much about that. Did you want to share a little bit about, about a little bit about your mom and what she went through? And yeah, I can share a little bit for sure. So again, she got diagnosed with ALS, um, kind of came as a shock to us. She was young and fit and healthy and athletic and, you know, lived a good lifestyle and, and ate well. And, and again, it's just one of those things that, that life happens. And, you know, we're not the only family that life happened to. It, it happens to everybody. Um, but, yeah, she was extremely strong. You know, it's a disease that you have three to five years, right? That's how long you have, the average lifespan. And um, it's a very kind of quick neurological disease where she lost the ability to walk and talk. Um, she had to use a machine to talk. And we had, a, a you know, someone helping us around the house and all that sort of thing. And, um, you know, very just difficult time to see somebody you love kind of struggle, but, um, it was her strength that kind of kept us going and, and pushed us through it. And she said that you know, no matter what happens to me, like, doesn't mean you stop living your life. You know, and I think that was huge that no matter what happens in life, it's something that I always keep with me is that you got to find a way to overcome and persevere because something else will happen. And if you kind of dwell on it and what was me, you know, she's like, that's the last thing I want you to do. So, um, for me, it's just kind of living in her honor and, um, you know, kind of doing my best each and every day, like we talked about earlier. So I love um, that. Yeah. Yeah. Very difficult time, but yeah, our family's that's closer me. because of it. That's right. And it's crazy yeah. how something like, tr- you know, tragedy can do that. Mm-hmm. Um, if you were to, you know, leave somebody some words of wisdom of kind of all the adversity you went through, all the stuff you went through in your life. What is, what is something that you would like to tell somebody that maybe be look, listening to the podcast right now? Just some words of wisdom. Dan's uh, words of wisdom. Dan's words of wisdom. I would just say, you know, find a time to smile. You know, smiling is a big thing for me. Um, you know, when my mom, you know, lost the ability to, to do a lot and she lost, like couldn't control her body and facial, you know, she had an amazing smile. But what's crazy is that I could still see when she couldn't smile, I could see it in her eyes, right? That she was smiling. And I think that's something that I'll always stick with me is just kind of always smile. You know, it, it, things could be worse. Whatever you're going through right now, it, it could be much worse. And you might feel like it is rock bottom, but literally just by having, you know, a, a smile, just putting a smile on your face, it can in, increase your mood drastically, right? And kind of help you overcome whatever you need to um, at the end of the day. So that's a yeah. great message. I love yeah. that. Find a time to <laughs> yeah. smile. That's amazing. Yeah. Simple. Thank you. Right. Super it's simple. It's so simple. Thank you, yeah. Dan, so much for joining us today on Music Junkies. I had a blast, right? I thought it was it super well. fun. And yeah. uh, I appreciate everyone that listened today. Please like, subscribe, follow Music Junkies. 
And uh, I definitely think that we would do round two with you for sure. Cause I think it would be yeah. like kind of fun to dip in a little bit more deeper with some other yeah. stuff as well. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thanks, Ned. I appreciate it. And um, I didn't realize how much music meant to me. And so I appreciate you, you doing this.